Hello everybody and welcome back to Astrology Victoria, today with your host Tatiana, also broadcasting for ANN Archetypal News Network and today we are going to take a look at the first two weeks of April from April the 1st, so happy April's Fools and all the way to April 15th. And by the way, the world is ending tomorrow. That was a bad joke. <laughs> Terrible April's Fools. Never mind. Can we just like redo this one more time? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Astrology Victoria. And today we're going <laughs> we're just gonna be talking about the first two weeks of April. And let's just get into it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm gonna keep doing like very, being very silly, and it's not going to work. Okay. So our little bit of our planetary overview. We have a lots of things going on. This is a very, very charged time of change, renewal, transformation, overwhelm, new things, all of that, uh, end of March, beginning of April. <laughs> if we made it through March, it's, it's a good sign, but April's not necessarily relaxing. <laughs> April's still a very charged month. So um, lots of, of big transits and intense energies and um, a few things uh, we have, obviously, uh, in the first week, we will have Mercury changing signs from Aries to Taurus. So that's going to shift a little bit the energy from a lot of the impulse energy of Aries into the more stable slow energy of Taurus we will have also the full moon in Libra April 6th or 5th depending where you are on the planet and uh this full moon it's 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 an interesting one it could be very beautiful but also very charged <laughs> we'll talk about that a little bit later and also Venus is changing signs into Gemini April 11th, which will definitely change the vibe as well. However, the Aries energy is still very, very present. And at least the first week, so we will be talking about um, a lot of this, this, what this means for us, this Aries energy. Um, so let's look a little bit further down. So... Let's talk first off about our Aries energy. You see this is pretty, pretty charged. As you can see, we still have Mercury, Jupiter, Chiron, and the Sun all in Aries. And this combination, it's a big combo. It's a big stellium. So here is the energy of Aries. I like to show the image so we can see Aries is about me, my desires. I'm by myself. I'm going for what I want is the warrior energy is ruled by Mars. It's like, ah, go. <laughs> what is happening also <laughs> with this Aries energy is that Mars, the ruler of Aries, is in Cancer right now. And there is a, a need to tone down the fiery energies of the I want I want to do this I'll just do this whatever it takes Mars in Cancer which is the ruler of all this energy it's it's needing to either protect um their their loved ones that is one beautiful aspect of Mars in Cancer but it can also be about um it's like a water down mars <laughs> you know <laughs> a little bit of like the the wound of the masculine could also be the emasculating of the masculine which is a watered down so all of this might be coming up and why do i want to talk about the wound of the masculine because Chiron is also in Aries and this whole stealing has to do with this so masculine energy I mean the young I don't necessarily mean men I mean the masculine is the energy the essential energy in the universe that allows us to 
go. It's the willpower that allows us to do, to output focused energy. That is young, masculine, whatever we want to call it. This is what it, it does. It goes for things. It acts. It's outward energy versus the yin energy, which is where right now Venus is, is the more Taurus. The feminine is the yin. It's the receptive. You wait. You intend. You open. You relax. You receive. That's the yin, right? It's a very different energy. Both energies are required for the functioning of everything in the universe and both energies are within us. I know a lot of you know this, but maybe some of you are not quite familiar. So I am just repeating this for those who might go, oh, really? Is that so? So we all have that feminine, masculine, or yin and yang energies within us in our own being that allow us to act when we need to act and to relax or receive. And this creates this circular cycle or this figure eight cycle if we if we prefer where there's a give and receive and then a balance point give receive balance point give receive and balance point that should be the most ideal flow of energy <laughs> is when we have these cycles cycles of output and reflection output and reflection and astrology itself is a reflection of that we will see with each cycle there are cycles for this cycles for this even the chart itself that goes from yin to yang to yin to yang each sign being alternate everything wants us to go into these rhythms and why am i going through all of this because for the past i don't know how many millennia i would be lying to you if i told you exactly when this started there has been huge imbalances in the yang and the yin energies basically the yang or the masculine has been exacerbated exacerbated so much so that the yin has been so diminished within us with within everyone basically um, and within our societies, we see that it's all about go get it, go and get it, go and get it. Pillaging, abusing is like the shadow side of this. War, fighting for things. I want that. I need to fight for it in order to get it. And this is basically what we see in our world or what we have seen for ages and eons. At least everywhere we look around from the more obviously aggressive things in our world which are war absolutely like war and we've seen it today with the war in ukraine like or any other war happening anywhere you know but that young exacerbated energy of i need to fight in order to get what i want that's the ugh, warrior energy on steroids that's one thing and war has been present in our world forever <laughs> and then there is the that aspect of the imbalance and then the other part could be a little bit more the passive aggressive side of that which is the rat race you know we need to go get things in order to uh, to manifest anything in our life we have to go and get it and and we don't allow much space for the creative process of not going and getting but allowing to just be in a space of receiving it intending it and then seeing where it appears so we can mobilize our energy and these imbalances of masculine or yin and yang because they're just you know there there's it's it's the wound of our world <laughs> you know if we're so used to it that it's 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 we don't really question it can we actually take time off completely to recharge, regenerate, rebalance, recenter, so then we can go and act in the world with kindness and compassion. And also, this Mars in Cancer reminds us of that, of that as well. And that Mars in Cancer trining Saturn in Pisces will also be a reminder of this. What I mean by that is that if what we're fighting for or what we want is not aligned with a higher truth that is connected to everything. And by this, I mean um, being responsible 
with the collective energy. I create and co-create. So we are not the receivers of an out there thing that we are victims of. That could feel like that with, with Saturn in Pisces, that we are these victims of this reality and then there's nothing we can do about it and that we're disconnected from something grander and bigger and that it couldn't be further from the truth. The Saturn in Pisces wants us to see that there's nobody, nobody out there is going to come and save us. No one. And Saturn is going to be there for a while, you know, about three years. It's just two degrees of Pisces. But that now we're starting to see there's no guru, no power out there who will save me. I am responsible. And not only responsible for my energy and my being, my words and my actions and my thoughts, I'm responsible of everything I create and co-create because my impact in, will ripple through layers and layers of consciousness. So if we are aligned, this alignment of Mars-Saturn, of the will, which is Mars, the will to do and act, is of a noble cause. That is, it's connected to compassion, to the greater good, to the collective energies, and also to the heart and the vulnerability, which is cancer. Can we be vulnerable and at the same time act? So this is not an emasculated masculine energy. This is just the energy of the one that goes after things, but having always in mind compassion and care. The nobility is the noble <laughs> warrior, if you would like. If, if we could put it that way. There is something about defending defending the motherland or this is the mama bear you know <laughs> the mama lion mama bear archetype it and this because mars is ruling aries if anybody is still going out there i want this and i'm gonna get it at whatever cost even if i need to squash people in the race this is not gonna cut it this is not gonna cut it so there's a few things to see, to watch for this stellium where Chiron is still present. So Chiron is obviously the wound. Here we're looking at the wound of the masculine. Why has the masculine gone in such an, an exacerbation of disproportionate, uh, of disproportion into war and aggression and abuse for eons? Why? What has been so painful? Where, where was the, I want to do this, got squashed. And therefore, the reaction of any being that's been squashed is either to retrieve and be so afraid to go and get what I want. Because if I, I go for what I want, I'm going to be hurt. That's one way. The other way, it's kind of its opposite then I'm just going to get it. And if I have to kill and because I was not, you know, it's like the abuser, you know, how people that have been abused in their childhood could either become this horrible, like victims of more abuse or they can become perpetrators, right? So at this moment in time, this is the, the time where we can heal that collectively. How could this show up? Well, this could show up as, you have an impulse, an idea, and if it comes from your ego and your desire for something without regarding anything in, in your surroundings, <laughs> well, you could come into painful realizations or painful things happen and you ha you look in, you, you will have to stop and look. So it is important right now to also stop a little bit and look within to see it first. Where have we lacked courage and why? Where does that come from? So that's one aspect of helping to heal this. There is a reason why these energies are present now. And second, what I'm going for, is it a selfish drive? Me, myself, and I without thinking about collective impact or impact at large? And if so... 
why? Why do I want this? What was I denied at what point? So these are good questions because otherwise it will feel as though we want to get things and it's just not happening. We want it so bad, but it's slow, you know? And there is a good thing about the trine between Mars and Saturn is that Saturn tones Mars down. And it says, yes, you want all that, but what is your impact? Yes, you want that, but is it from your soul or is it from your ego, right? These are the questions that we can all ask, ask ourselves this week. And then we can get the best outcome of this. Now, let's not forget that there is also um, um, there is also this kite formation, you know, between the nodes, the south node and the north node and this point of Mars and Saturn. And whenever we have these kite formations like this, this is a kite, it's, a, it's the two trines and the two sextiles or, or the grand trine and the two sextiles we're seeing here. It means that there is an energy beyond that is pushing us in a certain direction. And because the north node has these sextiles, this is exactly what I'm saying. If you are aligned with that will of the feminine, of the yin, and you are able to tone down that harsh, rash, impulse, desire of Mars, and then your actions are motivated by something more deep, more calm within you, more connected, where you can take the time to slow down and really tune into what it is important not just for you and your ego desire, but for you and for all your environment, then there is a lot of support because we are moving more towards that um, Taurus energy or the Taurus polarity of the Scorpio. We leave the drama behind and the hidden things into more joy and love and, and ease and slowness. It's like almost embrace that you don't have to go in a race on this motorbike. You can actually go for a stroll. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. And still have time to stop and smell the flowers. And this will slowly start balancing that wounded masculine. And this can look so different for anyone. For those who know astrology well, well you, you absolutely understand that every chart is different and this will affect every person differently. But if you are an Aries or have any planets, <laughs> personal planets or angles in any of the vicinity of, you know, yeah, of from, let's say, yes, the fifth degree to basically the yeah the 25th degree basically all of Aries <laughs> if you're an Aries or have significant Aries planets this will be probably talking to you and this will be an energy that to consider and it also obviously depends what planet and if you're absolutely not sure of any of this and this is mumbo jumbo um, please feel free to contact me and I can help you with a beautiful birth chart reading where we cover uh, the evolutionary journey of your soul and all its motivations and we uncover pieces and depth. Of course, everybody's different. So <laughs> that is why I, I offer this for you as well. So anyway, going back to our Aries healing the wounded masculine. This also represents a lot of new beginnings. We have talked about this period of time as a big reset. It's not just a reset for people. It's, it's, it's a big collective reset. It's, it's lots of new things. And this could be so fast. I obviously would have to talk about Pluto. But Pluto entering Aquarius, which that happened on March 23rd, um, it's, it's a huge deal. So I have not covered Pluto in detail because I'm going to do a specific video about Pluto entering Aquarius and what it will bring in the next 20 years. And obviously, as we enter a whole new era for humanity, which is probably in the next 500 years. So we're just at the beginning of it. <laughs> so let's not get so excited. It's not, it doesn't happen overnight, okay? But this really is a big deal in in, in restructuring our, our societal fabric. So we will talk more about this for sure and Pluto, Pluto entering uh, Aquarius and making some aspects 
uh, to significant planets right now. So, so back to the Aries thing, because there's all this new energy. Saturn moved into Pisces very recently as well. Pluto moved into Aquarius, and we have uh, all these big Aries stellium. So this is a hallmark for big, giant leaps in change, transformation, and evolution. If we're still stuck to our patterns and our painful old ways of doing things, uh, this is the time where things get revealed. Things are put in front of us so we can actually do something about this. So again, the wounded masculine for every human, where is that? Where have you been not capable or afraid of moving forward? And what was your motivation or what are your true motivations for moving forward or enacting your will? And that will play out in many different ways. I just invite you to ponder those questions so you don't need to suffer the pain. Also, looking at the pain is a, is a good way of putting it as well. When we sit with the pain of what that could have meant, maybe it was in childhood we were denied things. We were said, no, no. You know how a lot of our generation, at least I speak for myself, you know, you wanted to do something or express and then parents would go like, don't do that, don't do that, quiet, shut up, like all of that, you know, don't, 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 that constant no that a lot of us grew up with um, just because, you know, you're a child, you need to behave or whatever, you know, and even worse, people that were even abused or or hit, you know, remember the belt, if if there's some of you, and I'm going to go very raw here, but some of us still remember the belt, you know, the belt is coming, you know, that time where kids, it was okay to punish kids by hitting them. And all of that could be surfacing in different ways. And it surfaces in our daily lives, in the way we, we behave when we want something, we enact our, our fears in, in every person has a different coping mechanism and that's why the invitation right now is for you to look at that and sit sit with that if that comes up that would be at least for me the highest way to look at things and let them go see where they are if there's a trigger where what's that trigger telling you about yourself and about why you're not able to do something you want or get something you want why what is in the way so all of that okay oh that was a big chunk so let's move on because there's a lot more to talk about but that is a big big chunk um so venus uh, sorry mercury enters Taurus. that's on april the third and mercury will be also very soon conjuncting the north node as well and um we have a lot of like we, we have Venus had recently been in contact with Uranus. So a lot of it's, it's good to listen to Venus at this time because Venus in Taurus is all about the senses and the body and listening to your body needs and also trying new things. It also means that there could be shakeups in our um, or disruptions in the economy. And we have seen that a lot in the past uh, weeks lots of uh, in instability in the in the financial world and this essentially is just reminding us again and again shake your value system up <laughs> so if you're still afraid like or too attached to a certain idea of money and wealth and things like that um or what that means, what abundance means for you. This is sometimes people need to be shaken. The reason, the whole reason, the whole economic system is being shaken like in an earthquake right now is so that all of us look into what is essential and what abundance truly means. And I got this idea. <laughs> I'm going to share with you a, a crazy idea I had about, well, people are so worried about the money system, the money is going to crash, the system is going to crash, but what's the new system? Where's my money going? I'm going to lose my money. And I've seen this a lot around uh, people around me, afraid of like, okay, let's move money from our banks because there's going to be bank runs. And, and maybe the banks just want to now control everything with crypto. And there's a lot of fear around that. And I would just pause and go, wait a minute. Why, why are we so attached to 
money or currency, whether it is physical, digital, it doesn't matter. Whether it is in a bank or an institution or an investment or under your mattress. The question I would want everybody to ask themselves right now is, what is money for? And go, what are my basic needs? Because that is the question of Venus. What do I need? What do I need to survive? Venus and Taurus. And with Uranus, it's like maybe we need to, to effect changes in the way we get our resources. And this has been going on, obviously, we've been talking about this for a long time. <laughs> so if you haven't seen my videos, I repeat this a lot. But there is a legitimate question. So the idea I came up with, and if there's any techie person out there who wants to use all the new Aquarian tools of technological AI craziness, which is part of our world, whether we like it or not, or at least part of the choice of the world, um, I thought, well, if we're going to, if we're going back to essential bartering, for example, I am right now bartering some body work that I'm really needing <laughs> and it's very much aligned with the Chiron in Aries just be courageous and look at the pain and, <laughs> and Taurus with the body because I'm really it's a technique is like even harder than rolfing if you know what rolfing is it's like it, it, it's even like bruising your 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 muscles to to release stuck memory from the cells so well that's me I'm telling you this because um because of the bartering so i'm bartering or exchanging trading that that i really need at this moment so my venus right needs my body needs this in order to heal things or traumas that are stored in my cellular memory and i'm trading that for dance classes because the person doing this for me wants dance classes so it's like oh how perfect perfect trade and there's no money involved or currency or middle middleman. Obviously, in our economy, that's how economy was created. Because oh, how do we, how do we equate value to value? But this is where our new technologies could come in handy. And this is why I'm saying, if out there there is some creative person with techie skills, with algorithms today, we could create systems of, for example. Um, now we can, like, it's a little bit like a matching system where you match this with that, and that's what algorithms do anyway. But let's say match specific things, like I am offering this and looking for this. And obviously, if you're techie and there's some algorithms or create an app that matches your finds, the people that could have that exact exchange, and maybe there's probably multiple people wanting that exact exchange in your area or if it could be done online who knows but that could be a whole new way of doing bartering for instance the reason i'm bringing this up is because our new world is wanting different things when it comes to exchanges and resources and we're still very attached to the idea of monies does that mean that money will cease to exist no it's probably still going to be there I'm also seeing around me manifesting in my daily life. There are initiatives of people in the local communities doing their local currencies so they can have local exchanges. And that is also part of this revolution in the, in the economy. So my invitation to you all is first, don't panic around money and go back to essence. What do you need? When you go back to needs, then you can see that you don't, don't necessarily need money to get what your body is needing or your, or your sense of safety is needing. You just need to look around and see where you can exchange that and how and get creative. That is also part of Uranus's job. And Uranus Venus is not only being creative in our relationships, but I think in this particular sense it, it's also having to do with our money with our money our money values and our money systems i think this is this is this is also part of that it's not it's it's about what we value and what we want so let's just take a look at that instead of panicking 
panicking. I, I see, I've heard so much panic around me in the, in the past few weeks around, you know, possible collapse of the economic system. And yes, maybe, maybe that's what we need, a collapse, but panic, it's, it's useless. It's, it's just change your focus. And you'll see that then with peace and ease, come solutions and with solutions all the needs are provided for and that's the invitation of venus and that is essentially the invitation of the yin or the feminine which is precisely what we're trying to balance out if we incorporate more of that yin or feminine which is the space in which we go within and don't go like that, but go like this, peacefully grounded, like that Taurus, like this beautiful lady, rounded, touching that grass and feeling, you know, the the aromas of the flowers and in, enjoying the bounty that is around and the safety and the security and the beauty. When we connect to those archetypes, it's much more easier to then act. <laughs> you know, then we can go into action. And again, Mars is right now in a yin sign. This is the sign of the moon. So you see, it's like, huh, we're connecting lots of dots. So if you're still having to push through for what you want, might just run into um, painful realizations. So yeah, I invite you to not panic when it comes to finances and economy. Look around you and redefine abundance and redefine value. And you'll see it might shift completely your perspective and bring miracles into your life. That is also something I wanted to mention, that when we allow this energy, this hectic energy to settle and to just breathe in something different, and that is an exercise. And this, that is what Saturn wants us to do with true spirituality. Let's remember our video from last time of, of Saturn in Pisces. Our, our true spiritual tests, which are Saturn tests in Pisces, are how do we not, you know, dream out reality, but use our, 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 our energy responsibly and can use these tools like self, like managing emotional, you know, upheavals or hecticness. Anyway, so that is part of what this energy is inviting. And that will lead us also to... So a full moon in Libra, it's it's kind of a continuation of these themes. And I think it's very important to understand that this full moon in Libra will be highlighting <laughs> that as much as I want to go and get something that I want to go and get, and we're going to have Chiron conjuncting the sun. So wherever I'm feeling that I cannot do that and blame the whole world for it or what's outside of me, maybe the invitation is to look, can I do what I want and still look at the needs of others and that's why the libra polarity is always there to remind us that that the only way to be on our own to go solo is also knowing that if we're just the lone wolf we might just perish you know but the lone wolf or not the lone wolf but you can still be you and be essentially you with your with the, your soul's desires and take into consideration others and you might find that there's lots of mirrors popping up, popping up around the fifth or the sixth, around this full moon. If we have not wanted to look at that, you might have lots of people popping up in your life to, to either remind you of first, what are you afraid of going and get, going for? Or are you being too selfish and too self-centered that you're not looking at others? So it could be either or, depending on, on how conscious you have been about this Aries energy. So expect these mirrors to show up and illuminate because full moons tend to illuminate, to shine light into something and, and give you more awareness. So if you're open to that and to receiving that, then this full moon can be very, very beautiful. And because, again, we, we talked about this, this, this trine of, um, the south node with Mars and this kite formation that is part of the full moon as well. And um, we will um, be also having something a little bit uh, harder with this full moon is that the that Pluto will be starting a square to uh, Mercury and the north node. So 
at the same time we're having these awarenesses, we might have a lot of, um, it could be obsessions, it could be mental, uh, uh, it could be panic and fear because usually it's it's when Pluto enters the spheres of Mercury, there could be a lot of psychosis as well, obsessions, fears, unfounded fears, things that come to the surface. Also, there could be uncoverings of dark hidden motivations. So uh, I'm going to read you because I really love reading from uh, the Archetypal Universe by Ren Butler, my dear friend and mentor. Um, this is just fabulous what it's, it says here. So I want us to, pr I, I would like to presence us all to this square so that by that full moon, we can take the best of this energy and not let the fear or the panic of our surroundings get the, you know, get us like going crazy. So uh, I'm going to read to you this. A, a pa on, at its best, and that would be obviously when we have primes or more favorable aspects we could have a passionate and probing mind deep insight into emotional causes and motivations an interest in criminology or depth psychology a gift for persuasive communication this is at best what we would want out of this this is to have the awareness to look deep to see what the hidden motivations we have where we are speaking from and if we're trying to manipulate people, uh, then we can actually transform our thinking and our and our processes and even our fears, or even have self mastery over our mind. Um, however, if we are unaware and we just let the mind run loose, this is what can happen: mental struggles and obsessions, fear of one's dark or shadow thoughts harmful and destructive communication, aggressive darkness and beliefs, crude speech. Um, there's a little bit more on that because I think this is important. Um, a tendency toward mental fixation and struggle, fear of polluting one's mind with dark or heavy images, obsession with one train of thought, extreme or frantical opinions, a mind ready to explode, bad attitudes, antagonistic beliefs, harmful and destructive comments, aggressive dogma and propaganda, tendencies toward mental domination, intellectual power struggles, desires to change other people's minds forcefully, urges to impose one's intellectual or philosophical model on the world, an inclination to ask loaded questions or make others confess, an interrogative, interrogative style of speaking, a habit of bad mouthing and sharing the dirt on others, <laughs> intense or destructive, destructive gossip, nasty rumors and mudsliding. <laughs> oh, this wording! <laughs> Attempts to destroy others verbally, muck ra raking journalism, intrusive reporting, the poison pen or tongue. Devastating insults, crude speech, a foul mouth, and obsession with sexual innuendo. So, whoa, for the shadow. The reason I read the whole shadow qualities, and thank you, Ren, from the bottom of my heart for having put out this for the world to understand the the psyche better. This is fabulous. <laughs> um, the shadow side of that Pluto... Um, Pluto Mercury can have a lot to do with also our fears and obsessions of maybe what's happening right now in the world. You know that GPT chat for, and I will make a whole new a whole video on Pluto and the implications of these huge announcements on the world, the week that changed the world with the launch of the chat GPT and the AI, the race of the AI, you know, <laughs> that happened. Huh, exactly the week that moved Pluto moved into uh, Aquarius. Hmm, go figure. I wonder. It's obvious. It's there, right? But with the with the launch of that Chat GPT four, there could there is already a lot of concern around AI and speech and how that's changing our perspective of the manipulation of how crime could could now be like a cyber crime now takes a different turn. There's a lot of 
dystopian thoughts around uh, this new these new technologies, and that's why please be patient for the video I'm going to make on that because I'm going to um, broadcast some of the YouTube videos I found fascinating around what's happening right now in our world with our technologies and these new things and how that impact our thinking and our world. So yes, these kinds of things like the launch of ChatGPT, the AI wars, the you know deep fakes and and the fear they could be paranoia it could be also governments trying to control others um and and we will see so much uprising as well this could bring more heat to the table as well when people get like in these obsessions and fears the mind can go crazy and so be aware of like insults especially because there's i mean insults or any kind of 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 outwardly directed uh um aggressive speech that is might be unnecessary so at this time when whenever we have these aspects i always recommend to instead of doing this pointing out at all your grievances point them back inward um and instead of blaming and shaming look at why you need to blame and shame where does this come from within you? Because when we look at it not outside, but we look the outside as a mirror, it's much more easy to turn that square into a trine where we can see where in us, where in me is this coming from? If I am angry and I want to badmouth somebody or bash on somebody or be aggressive with my comments or thoughts, where in me is, is this coming from? Because it's not people's fault people just are people and they're doing what they're doing the responsibility and i go back to saturn the real true spiritual responsibility is me what am i doing so if this happens and you're like ah, about to strike <gasps> deep breaths and point the finger you know because when one finger is pointing that wing is what there are three pointing this way you know like this <laughs> So if you're pointing out, chances are something is pointing in. <laughs> Look at that inward motivation and then you'll see that these transits will not necessarily affect you as much. Obviously, this might have also to do with the whole financial crisis and system. This It's very possible because of the Taurus energy that there could be huge destabilizations between the energy of where the, a distribution of power and when, how money moves. So you have been hoarding money or afraid of money. You might even lose money. But if you've been generous, kind, and you know, you might actually get money. That's also part of like when Pluto is around, <laughs> you know, the... Um, when Pluto heat hits any point or planet, there is definitely a a a a power surge, and power can move in 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 any direction. And what this wants us to look at is how we are using power as well. So this could also point to the power of your mind, right? So how are we using our mental power? That's also that. And how are we using our mental power also to to um um to be more in touch with the taurian things and i go back to all this has to do with money you know what it might not be you know it might be very possible that people will be fighting over money you know these during these times that they, you know there's struggles and power struggles and people bantering and fighting over money that might be thing, you know, like, or even with this full moon also having the moon in Libra, you might also see sometimes litigations and things like that, you know, happen and um, where there needs to be some kind of a desire to balance things out. So if you have been generous, you might be give, getting getting something back. If you have been, you know, <laughs> stingy, stingy and, you know, <laughs> 40, you might be having to release some of that back into the collective so again open-ended question how are you behaving and how are you training your mind to point at your own <laughs> at your own thoughts and patterns so that's that's for that full moon uh 
it's also what I, I could see as the main themes for the full moon. And the, this full moon, because it's in Libra, is ruled by Venus. So let's not forget that Venus is still in Taurus and this Taurus energy is going to also be present. So this may also soften everything. This is also a time where you can um, take care of yourself and be more in the feminine, in the yin, right? If you are more balanced in the yin, then you might actually... Uh, feel that relationships can feel more harmonious so this is also a good time to um to get together with people and and use people as mirrors for teaching you about yourself and then in, enjoy that process you know <laughs> this process this painful process with chiron and this difficult process with pluto only wants us to transform let's just remember that planets and asteroids are our psychic functions they have a function and a role and when we understand that role we don't fight it we just move with it consciously and aware so <laughs> whoo that's a handful let's see what um and then finally towards the end of uh, towards that will be tuesday april 11th we will have venus entering gemini so venus moving out of its comfort zone tor taurus into gemini where it's could be very distracted um the question for that venus around that time would be uh obviously that could be the enjoyment of people friends talking chatting gossip all of that could be venus things it could be oh i want to go and look online to all these new gpt things and just spend hours and hours distracted there and gossiping and you know <laughs> this could this could be also paired with that um with with that that we just talked about so venus wanted to get distracted into things because it's gemini you know we like to chat we like to talk we like to do this and that and that and that and meet new people and blah, blah, blah. and that's not at all a bad thing however however venus will be squaring saturn or i'm sorry saturn will be squaring venus uh so when saturn square venus uh, Saturn is going to say to Venus, <laughs> whoa, 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 tone it down there, like focus, you know, <laughs> focus a little bit. The Saturn Venus square wants us to be, uh, it, it might feel like the things we want and what gives us pleasure is just, oh, oh, I cannot go do it. So it's like the party pooper of our pleasures is Saturn. But the ask of Saturn in this particular configuration is also possibly to assess what are the important things and focus them, you know, not do 10 different things and get super distracted, but maybe focus on one thing, you know, one thing that you can deepen in. And maybe it's also learning something new because Venus in Gemini obviously is the love of learning, right? You might want to learn something new. It might be definitely linked to these new technologies or new things that are appearing in our world. However, how are we using that responsibly? And that's Saturn's job to make sure all of that is responsible. Same thing with our relationships. If we're gossiping and putting stuff on social media and saying whatever about people, Saturn will, you will feel this Saturn as a big damper you know maybe having difficulties with people and people not wanting to talk to you because whatever you know I don't know it could play out in so many ways one archetype can be ex experienced and expressed in so so many different ways that I'm just giving you the general panorama with these um, forecasts so you can get the best of these archetypes and and apply them to your life however they speak to you. And again, like I said, if you're not sure of how this speaks to you at all because it's too technical, um, you can always ask me. <laughs> and I'll help you. And I'll make it simpler for you. I hope this is my insights are simple enough for you um, to at least have something to do with this astrology. And how you can use this in consciously in your daily life um i feel kind of compelled 
to read um, a little passage from, um, this is from a, a course in miracles um, that, um, well, let me see where it is, because I, I, I have been pondering on this particular thing, and and this is not to say that, uh, you know, I'm just sharing this from A Course of in Miracles. You don't need to uh, like this as a, <laughs> this is not a dogmatic thing or anything. And if you feel like triggered by some of the wording, because it feels attached to certain specific um, uh, philosophies, uh, just change the wording if you will. But I, I just wanted to share the message because... This, I felt, is very appropriate for our times so that we uh, can be more in harmony <laughs> and bring that yin and that harmonious energy of Venus into our lives. So, um, uh, so this is lesson 90 from The Course of Miracles. So for this review, we will use these ideas. Let me recognize the problem so it can be solved. Let me realize today that the problem is always some form of grievance that I would cherish. Let me also understand that the solution is always a miracle with which I let the grievance be replaced. Today, I would remember the simplicity of salvation by reinforcing the lesson that there is one problem and one solution. The problem is a grievance. The solution is a miracle. And I invite the solution to come to me, and that's Venus, right? Oh, through my forgiveness of the grievance. And that is obviously the yin, the moon, the Venus, you know, <laughs> all of that. Um, and my welcome of the miracle that takes its place. Specific applications of this idea might be in these forms. This presents a problem to me which I would have resolved. The miracle behind this grievance will resolve it for me. The answer to this problem is the miracle that it conceals. I seem to have problems only because I am misusing time. I believe that the problem comes first and time must elapse before it can be worked out. I do not see the problem and the answer as simultaneous in their occurrence. That is because I do not yet realize that God, or replace it by source, energy, or whatever you want to put names. That is because I do not yet realize that God has placed the answer together with the problem, so that they cannot be separated by time. The Holy Spirit will teach me this, if I will let him, or her, or it. <laughs> and I will understand it is impossible that I could have a problem which has not been solved already. So the reason I I felt compelled to share this is because when we hold on to the grievance or whoever, I don't know, if somebody did something and we're holding on to this anger and this rage, which is, you know, a lot of, of this, you know, pent up energy or even the desire to, shout it out in like nasty comments and you know or even just my inner thoughts when we're able to go oh wait a minute there is a miracle within this there is a lesson or a miracle if i just let it go or look at it from a different perspective and allow it to be there somebody does something it really annoys you instead of bashing that person can we not see there could be another perspective. Can we not see it with the eyes of compassion and also see that there can be many solutions or, or, or that the problem itself is not really a problem. It already contains the solution. So instead of going through the fight, can we go straight to finding the solution? That is what I want to leave you today. And I hope all these insights help you. It was a long video, but this is a lot to unpack for these two coming weeks. Um, please feel free to share this information if you if you liked it. Subscribe, like, share. 
um, so the algorithm can find me and this information. And um, please, please have a blessed, blessed day. Stay at peace. Stay within yourself. Stay in the grace. And also go and get what you want to get from your soul. I love you and I'll see you very soon. <laughs>